the ThinkPad T60 was released in 2006, notable for being the first T-series ThinkPad to be released by Lenovo instead of IBM. It offered several notable improvements over its predecessors, such as the move to 64-bit dual-core processors, support for SATA hard drives from the factory instead of IDE, and support for more RAM and better graphics. It was very well received, and to this day, it is still a favorite within the ThinkPad community. The following year, Lenovo released its successor, the T61, which brought even more performance improvements to the table. Unfortunately, around this time, Lenovo discontinued the high-resolution IPS displays that had been offered in 15-inch ThinkPads up to that point, and IPS screens wouldn't return to mainstream ThinkPads until the X220 in 2011 and the T440p in 2013. Over the years, people figured out that the T61 was similar enough to the T60 that you could, with minimal effort, swap a T61 motherboard into the T60's chassis, allowing you to have the improved performance of the T61 combined with the better screens offered in the T60. Several months ago, I did this, making two videos where I built what many call a Frankenpad T601. I've been using this Frankenpad for quite a while now, and I really enjoy it. But especially with modern operating systems and the demand of the modern internet, even the improved performance of the T61 hardware has a bit of trouble keeping up. So I'm going to take my beloved Frankenpad to the next level by upgrading this beyond what was originally thought possible. On its own, the T61 is a very capable machine. It has many improvements over the T60, such as support for more RAM and faster graphics and processors. However, it is actually possible to upgrade the T61 even further. Lenovo held back some features that had been implemented into the T61. You could call it a restraining bolt of sorts, for fear that it might cause some compatibility issues with certain hardware. As time went on, this became less of an issue, but Lenovo never officially patched the system to be able to unlock some of these features. So about 10 years ago, Notebook Review Forum member Middleton created a modified BIOS for nearly all of the 2007-era ThinkPads that unlocked these hidden features. It has since become known as the Middleton's BIOS, and is one of the best upgrades you can make to any of these older ThinkPads. So what exactly does this patch do? Most importantly for performance, in my opinion, it unlocks SATA 2 drive speeds, allowing hard drives and especially SSDs to run at a faster speed than what was originally possible with the T61. It also removes the pesky wireless card whitelist that ThinkPads are basically known for, allowing you to put in practically any newer wireless card of your choosing. It also allows you to put in more RAM. The T61 by default is limited to only 4GB of RAM, which for modern tasks often just isn't enough. The Middleton's BIOS doubles that RAM limit to 8GB, which makes a pretty big difference sometimes. This modified BIOS allows you to swap the function and control keys. This isn't something I will be doing, but some of you may appreciate that. And lastly, it removes a thermal sensing error that sometimes happens when you try to put in faster processors. Now there are some machines like the X61 and X300 which have soldered processors, but they can still benefit from the Middleton's BIOS by being able to accept more RAM, newer wireless cards, and faster storage devices. My T61 motherboard has a pretty run-of-the-mill setup right now. It has the original maximum 4GB of DDR2 RAM, a Core 2 Duo T7300, and a 240GB solid-state drive that I installed. I'm installing the Middleton's BIOS so I can basically completely max out my system with 8GB of RAM and a Core 2 Extreme X9000 processor, which is pretty much the fastest processor you can put in a T61 without resorting to physical hardware modifications. I might do a video on this in the future, but basically there are a few physical mods that you can do so you can put in Core 2 quad processors. As I said, the T61 on its own isn't a bad machine. But especially with a bloated operating system like Windows 10 and many modern websites, it is showing its age. I can browse the web for the most part without issues, but some websites can get very choppy, and even just scrolling through web pages can really bog down the system. YouTube is a good example of where this laptop really shows its limitations. Videos play with some hiccups at 720p in full screen, but at 1080p, things become basically unplayable. Starting up the computer also takes a pretty long time, even with the solid-state drive, without a doubt held back by the SATA 1 limit imposed by the system. So when I do these upgrades, I'm not expecting a miracle to happen, but I would definitely like to get a little bit more out of my T61, especially with my unique Frankenpad setup. Before I began doing these upgrades, I decided to run a few tests just to see how performance will change afterwards. I tried YouTube playback, as I already said, 
I ran benchmarks in Geekbench 5 and Cinebench 20, and I encoded three videos in Handbrake. We'll take a look at the results from these and compare them to the upgraded results later. So let's get started with things. The first order of business is getting Middleton's BIOS installed. You can download the Middleton's BIOS from the ThinkWiki website. I'll leave a link in the description. Once you've downloaded it, you'll have to extract the files, as it downloads to your computer as a compressed.rar file. I used a program called 7-Zip for this, as it is free and open source. Once you've extracted the file, you'll want to see what operating system you have installed. If you're running a 32-bit version of Windows, the BIOS patch will be extremely easy, as you can run it as an executable from within Windows. Unfortunately, in my case, I have a 64-bit version of Windows installed, and it would be more of a hassle and waste of time to install a 32-bit version of Windows just to install this patch than it would be to just make a bootable drive of the patch, which you can do. So that's what I'm doing. Things are pretty straightforward, though. Unlike some ThinkPad BIOS mods out there, there's no coding that you have to do, and there isn't any fiddling around in the command line to worry about. You simply need to create a bootable drive from the provided ISO file. Most people will probably put this onto a flash drive, but I could not get that to work for some reason. I don't know why, but it just wasn't working. So I installed a program called Power ISO and did things the old-fashioned way by creating a bootable CD. Power ISO is a paid program, but they do have a free trial version, and for what we're doing, the trial version works just fine. So in Power ISO, once the ISO has been opened, click the Burn icon, then insert your CD, select the drive you want to install the ISO to, and click Burn again. The process usually only takes about a minute or so, and once it's done, you're ready to install the BIOS. Make sure you have a fully charged battery and the power adapter plugged in to reduce the risk of something going wrong during the BIOS flashing process. Put the drive you installed the patcher onto into the computer and restart it. It should load automatically, and if it doesn't, just change the boot order so that the system boots from a CD or external flash drive first. After that, you shouldn't have to do anything. The BIOS installs itself like any old BIOS update, and once it's done, you should be ready to go. You can remove the CD or flash drive and get ready to install your upgrades. So things are going to be a little bit different for this. Um, most people that are going to be doing this will just have a T61, but I have a T60 with a T61 motherboard in it. So the disassembly process is going to be a little bit different. But these two laptops are designed similarly enough that you should be able to follow along with what I'm doing. And if you are having a hard time following along, the T61 hardware maintenance manual can easily be found online. And I'll leave a link to it in the description. Taking apart these laptops is pretty easy. Before getting started, remember to unplug the power adapter and remove the battery to reduce your chances of accidentally frying an internal component. If all you're doing is upgrading the RAM, you simply have to remove four screws from the bottom to loosen the palm rest and then carefully lift it from the keyboard side until it pops out. Both RAM slots are located right here, and if you're putting in 8GB of RAM, this is a very good time to find out if the BIOS patch actually worked. And would you look at that, it worked just fine. So I can proceed with further disassembly to install everything else. One more screw frees the keyboard from the laptop, and then four more screws allow the keyboard bezel to be removed. Here's the wireless card. I won't be replacing this today, but if you were to replace it, you just have to disconnect the antenna cables and then loosen the screws holding down the card. Normally, there's a screw holding down the metal plate here, but this post had to be removed in order for the T61 motherboard to fit in my T60, so just ignore the lack of a screw there. Four screws allow the cooling assembly to be removed. Once you've unplugged the fan, you can take it all out. Then a flat tip screwdriver can be used to unlock the CPU socket and remove the original processor, which in my case is a T7300. If you're putting in a faster and more power-hungry processor like the X9000, better cooling is of utmost importance. So make sure to use alcohol to remove the old thermal paste from the cooling assembly, and use a good quality thermal paste to replace it. It is also strongly recommended, especially if you're doing the Frankenpad upgrade, to get a W500 cooling assembly, as this does a slightly better job of cooling the system than the original T60 or T61 cooling assembly. At first it may not seem to fit, but bending back a few of the fins here allows it to fit in perfectly. Once the cooling assembly has been put back into place, tighten your screws, remember to plug the fan back in, and then reinstall the keyboard bezel and keyboard. Before you put everything back together, now is probably a good time to test things just to make sure nothing got really screwed up. So I'm going to plug in the power adapter and make sure everything works. And well, the X9000 is showing up in the BIOS, we have 8GB of RAM detected, so we can finish putting everything back together. After starting up Windows, I could instantly tell things were a little bit faster. Applications seemed to be snappier, they loaded faster, 
Windows animations were smoother, and while this machine certainly won't beat anything remotely modern, it is a huge step up from what had been in there before. YouTube videos, which before struggled in full screen at 720p and didn't really play at all at 1080p, can now play 720p video near perfectly, and 1080p video is a little bit choppy, but still acceptable. Browsing the web felt noticeably faster, and a good amount of time was shaved off the computer's startup time. As I said earlier, I did a few performance tests just to see how much better the X9000 would perform, so here are those results. My first test was in the most recent version of Geekbench, Geekbench 5. Since it uses a newer hardware as a baseline, these numbers aren't going to be anything to write home about, but they are still a substantial improvement over what was in there before. The T7300 I had in there scored a measly 229 for the single core test, and 349 for dual core. The X9000 blew it out of the water by scoring 408 and 714, respectively. Then I tested Cinebench. With the original processor, it took 42 minutes and 15 seconds to render, giving us a score of 120 points. Now it renders in just over half the time, 26 minutes and 19 seconds, and gave us a score of 187. For Handbrake, I took three 1080p 60 frame per second video files and downscaled them to 720p 60 frame per second files while also re-encoding them from their original .mov codec to .mp4. On the T7300, the first file took 8 minutes and 20 seconds to encode, the second took 15 minutes and 9 seconds to encode, and the final one took 12 minutes and 6 seconds. After putting in the X9000 and upgrading the RAM, these times were greatly reduced, with the first file now only taking 4 minutes and 35 seconds, the second file taking 9 minutes and 54 seconds, and the third file taking 8 minutes and 17 seconds. Obviously, these performance results are still laughable by today's standards. Even a ThinkPad just a couple of years newer than the T61 will easily outperform it. Realistically, I won't be using my FrankenPad for any hardcore work. It spends most of its time as a typing machine for schoolwork, scripts, programming, and other text-heavy work, which is where the 4x3 aspect ratio flex view display really comes in handy. The 4x3 display is also useful for watching older television shows and movies. I have multiple newer ThinkPads like the T430 and W540 for when I need to do something more processor intensive, and for when I need serious horsepower, my desktop blows all of these machines out of the water. However, being able to give this thing a very respectable boost in performance to help squeeze a few more years out of it is very satisfying, and for the things I use this computer for, it makes enough of a difference in performance that I'm happy with the upgrades I did. Temperatures on this thing are still within a tolerable range, even with a more power-hungry processor like the X9000. However, you may want to keep in mind that this thing will probably run a little bit hotter than it did before if you upgraded the processor, and battery life might take a hit as well. You can do things like undervolting the processor to help mitigate this. But in my case, the laptop doesn't usually venture too far away from an outlet, so this isn't a huge concern. And when I do take this thing on the go, I usually have a few spare batteries on hand. And in the near future, this thing may become securely attached to a ThinkPad Advanced docking station so I can test out the external graphics capabilities of this thing, but that's a video for another day. I'm really happy with how these upgrades turned out. I was able to take a laptop that was really nice but lagging behind a little bit, and turn it into a machine that is snappy enough to handle my needs. The keyboard is one of the best out there, and the FlexView display it uses beats out even some brand new laptops. Hopefully this video helps some of you in your quest to unlock and max out your ThinkPad, whether it was a T61, a FrankenPad like mine, or any of the other models that can benefit from this upgrade. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.